My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to configure cloud native Quarkus projects in the easiest way because out of the box Quarkus supports a lot of interesting and nice ways how to set configuration. So in for this we have of course an example playground project that I have here and I'm using very recent uh, Quarkus version but that works in pretty much all of the Quarkus versions you would uh, use nowadays. And what I would like to show is just a very basic configuration that then we would like to set. So for the easiest way, we're gonna create a class here that we call Sunbeam, for example. And this should just take a configuration value. So we'd say something like inject some configuration value here. So sum.config, let's say. And this then well, should be some config that we can read. So the easiest way, and I'm pretty sure you know this, is to just inject values with config property. In Quarkus, it also works to then leave the at inject out. So this is just with the qualifier that works perfectly well. And now just for the sake of the example, we're gonna use some post construct method to just print out this value just for you to know, okay, I could access this in the code here. This should be class that should be there um, or an instance of the bean that should be there at startup so that this appears and then we can try to run this. Of course this doesn't work yet because we didn't set the config so now if it would go and say please start this up in the development mode then it will already say hey wait a second it failed to load the config and you know it couldn't start this up. Of course this wasn't set. So the easiest way to get started, of course, is to use your application properties file. So that resides under source main resources. That's very easy in Quarkus. And the, uh, the easiest way to do this is to just use the same naming that we have for our config properties. Some of them are shipped with Quarkus. We see this in a second. But to just define this, some config, and then, you know, have some value one, two, three. So of course this, if we already go there, restart the application, then it already works and you see, okay, now this is printed. Okay, easy. So this worked here. Of course, it also works if we run this application, you know, well in the actual Java mode, in this production mode. So in the prod profile, I built my application and then run it with Quarkus run Java dash jar. And then we see, okay, this also works config one, two, three. Okay, wonderful. Now this works to, well, change on a few levels. You can have a look at the Quarkus um, configuration docs. So this um, explains it very nicely in the guides and it shows you, well, it also has some config sources and all of this is available out of the box, which is quite nice. So we see, okay, there is a certain hierarchy going on, which um, takes precedence over something else. And if you read through them, this really makes sense, you know, from this cloud native standpoint is to say, okay, you could put some Something into the file but if you need to you could override it using system properties using environment variables things like that um, a few things I want to show you so for example if we say this is now baked into this application why because the application contains our properties file so that's well it will be started like this but of course we could override it um, and the easiest way to override it is to say okay I set dash D a system um, property in the same naming, some config, and then I say, okay, just one, two. And now this takes precedence. This will be read by the Quarkus system. And now my config is one, two, and this will be the config at runtime. So you could use that. Okay. Another way would be to set this as an environment variable. So instead of one to three is to say, okay, I export an environment variable. And now that's interesting. The naming is different. That's why, uh, that's because most of the en environment variables, or, well, namings in the uh, systems, on the Unix system or a Windows uh, based system, are just uppercase with um, underscores. So the naming, and that works out of the box, is just, well, make everything uppercase and replace uh, the dots with an underscore, or basically the special characters with an underscore, where then we say, okay, uh, two, three, four, I set this. Now my environment variable and my system is set to that. And then I start the application as before. And now this will be read from this as well, which will be very interesting for some cloud native runtimes in a second. But that is another way and a just very easy way to provide this out of the box. If you read into the guides, you will see that there are some other ways available in some other files, but this is just the most well basic and straightforward way to do that. Now, if we had, this is just an example, if we had some persistence going on here, 
Now you see they are not being used because I don't have even that Quarkus dependency, but doesn't matter just for the example. If, for example, I say I want to have some database and locally or in my development mode, I have certain well, local host databases being set up. And of course, in production, I want to override them. And I also want to change username password. What I can do then, this is just here for the example, I place it here. I could either then say, well, I would like to at runtime set the system property something to this, you know, username, uh, prod, user, whatever. And then I override all of these values, username, password, JDBC, URL, probably, or quite typically. Or in the same way, if you say I would like to have an environment variable, then first of all, make all of this uppercase and replace the dots with underscores. And this works out of the box. So then you just have to provide this environment variable, set this, and it will already take this uh, with a higher prior. So then you override the value here. There's no other configuration needed. This works quite nicely in Quarkus. I will show this in a second as well, but basically the mechanism is the same, whether we're talking about Quarkus um, configuration values or the ones you define for yourself. So this works here. So I could override this, we have seen that. And now what about some cloud native runtimes? So for example, if I have a Dockerized setup or a containerized setup here using a Docker file, and I well would like to run my application like this. So let's try that. I would uh, like to, well, just to be safe, rebuild the application and then build some uh, Docker image real quick to say, okay, let's build this. From that, I just include uh, the jar file, including my application properties, of course. And now I would like to docker run my temp image. And what does it say? Well, config one, two, three. Although my environment variable um, is still set, so that is still set to a different value. But well, now we're running in the container here. So now what you can do, and that's quite interesting, you could, of course, in the container also override these values individually. There are different ways to do that and it depends what you what you need for which value so for example i could say well an easiest and that's why i show in this uh, what i show in this video it's just the easiest ways there are thousand ways to do this but well there's just more a most pragmatic way is to set an environment variable either in your docker file this sometimes makes sense if you're building an image a docker image where you say okay the image should always run with a certain configuration and then i just have to start it up so then it's the easiest if that were the case to put an e and v um, directive here in your docker file and say okay the sum uh, config uh, should be set to whatever three uh, four five and then um, we could set this here and saying okay i'm going to rebuild my application here then we're gonna set the config to that and then if i run this image then it will read the new configuration so that, then i don't have to specify anything then it's basically baked into the image and if we had a look with docker run uh, temp overwrite the command we see okay there is my environment variable being set here. So then it's baked into the image. If you don't want that, maybe because of security reasons for using a password or something that needs to be defined dynamically, well, let's undo this. Let's just overwrite the image again. So then it's gone. And then it's the old value again, one, two, three. If you don't want this, then you can also specify docker run and then dash e for the um, environment variable same story before some config and then let's say four five six oops some config four five six and then we say okay please run that and this is then being overwritten so again, you don't have to specify anything else, just at runtime, you can overwrite this environment variable and then this will be taken. Why? Well, because from a Quarkus perspective, it uses the same mechanism. And then it just depends what you would need to do. So this makes a lot of sense for single configuration values or not too many. Maybe you have three, four, five, six, something like that. It's still manageable. If it's more than that, you probably would like to mount a config file. And if you have a look at the guides, this also works. There's some um, default um, paths that you can just override or you could even provide and change these paths. But just to keep it simple, just put, then, uh, put in then a properties file and you can override uh, these things. Okay, so that works. And what if we would like to have a setup such as, well, some Kubernetes uh, setup, how to run this there? Well, you probably already guessed it. If you're 
a Kubernetes expert if we had some YAML or, for example, some deployment that I just call Hello World here real quick. If we say this would be our um, image, so to say, then quite typically we say in the container, in the actual running container that then will be on a Kubernetes cluster, we specify an E and V an environment variable. This is very similar to what we have with Docker run dash E and say, well, the sim config can then be set either to a value or we take a value from a config map or from some other configuration source. Of course, it depends what you would like to um, have here. So let's say this should be something like this, whatever. So that also uh, works and this is just the easiest way. Of course, this also works to do it um, to do with some well, Quarkus, what we had, data source, username, things like that. So we can just specify them. And the nice story is we we don't need to, well, use or override anything else in the configuration system. This works quite nicely and out of the box. So that's the cool story. We don't need to well, do anything. And well, that's not just a coincidence. Of course, this has been built with cloud native runtimes in mind and the whole story of how to run this just effectively or in a very pragmatic way. So these were some examples how to do this in cloud native Quarkus projects. Again, I would really encourage you to keep it simple to start out with what's out there. If you need more values, then you can uh, uh, mount in some properties files or environment variable files. And then I think this makes sense. If you like the topic of effective Quarkus development, I have a video uh, course on that link down below. And we also, if you watch this before April uh, 2023, we have a workshop that you can uh, join us for. I would really um, appreciate that or these workshops are being held uh, once in a while. So you can just uh, check out if there's something available. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye. Thank you.